Hey, good afternoon, top fans. It is Bill from Top Fan Rivalry coming to you with another clubhouse, one that's actually going to be in two forms. It's going to be on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's Saturday currently, and it will be on our YouTube channel on Monday. And then on Thursday, it'll be on the podcast. And I wanted to welcome back my good friend, Christopher, back into the clubhouse. Christopher, it's great to have you back in. Hey, good to be back, Bill. I'm um, excited to be uh, talking to you during the playoffs. I mean, how exciting is that in baseball? Exactly. And so for those of you that see me maybe look up every now and again, I may or may not have a game on in the background as we're doing this. You know, hey, we're all baseball fans. We got to do what we got to do, right? Yeah, exactly. But Christopher and I got a chance to meet each other at um, the Fullerton Museum a couple of times now. Um, he's done a lot of fantastic things. He's been on the podcast before, but he's got so much rich history in this that I, I had to have him back. So so Christopher, my first question is, how did you start in the baseball community? How did you get your start? You know, because I'm a native San Diegan, uh, I, I, I went to public school, got into drawing when I was about 15, um, took commercial art classes uh, in my, my junior and senior year in high school. And I just, you know, I grew up in a family of five boys and sports was a big part of what we did um had a lot of kids on the block there in pacific beach a little small community which isn't small anymore no. uh but we 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 would play a lot of games especially during the summer um and baseball was the big one you know there was an occasional uh ball that went astray and broke somebody's window and you know we we got together and we collected the money so you know but you know it was it was that kind of fair play competitiveness mm -hmm. that uh we then tied it in with uh watching and, and supporting teams in our case it was the pcl padres um and of course we had the dodgers you know up the road and and uh um that was a big thrill but growing up i gotta tell you bill Every Saturday, we hurried to get our yard work completed, their chores, so we could sit down and watch the Yankees play some other team. And Dizzy Dean and Pee Wee Reese were the, were the commentators. And it was a great way to grow up and, and learn the game because both those guys played the game. And, and Dizzy, was, the stories he told were just hysterical. So yeah. it, it was moving into that uh mindset with that mindset moving into opportunities one of the big ones and this is a kick the 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 athletic director at san diego city college when i was attending there came in and spoke with my um my instructor and he says do you have anybody that could do some covers for my my programs and we got football season coming up he said yeah i got this kid he really likes sports and so um, this was the cover for uh, their program for the season. You know, it's a it's a charcoal drawing on illustration board. I used Calvin Hill of the, uh, I think it was on Sports Illustrated uh, cover uh, for the Cowboys and changed the, the helmet around so that it met up with the, uh, the college team. But, you know, getting that kind of a, a little leg up yep. early on in my career was, it was just great. And then, boy, I tell you what, I, the big break really came in um, in 77 and I uh, w was attending San Diego State, went into their sports information uh, office and I asked them, I said, do, do you guys need to use anything for your football programs? You know, I could do artwork. He said, no, we use photographs, but you know, let me, let me call up a buddy of mine. Got off the phone, gave me a slip of paper with a couple of names on it and and, and the phone number, and it was uh, Jim Weigel and Mike Ryan at the Padres, and and that right there uh, was was really the tipping point. Getting into be able to you know uh, meet those guys, I'd done a pastel drawing of a concept for a program cover uh, a couple of nights before. And the minute they saw that, they go, that's it. Let's get you going. And uh, first thing I got to do, and I hope you guys can see this okay, this was their media guide cover. And um, that's gorgeous. So, 
we got we got Randy Jones and Butch Metzger, and they were co uh, um, uh, Cy Young Award winners. And that same year, this I I sometimes don't like showing this because it's for me it's so bad. But this was you know early on that was the cover for the program for the whole season. And so, you know, and I, looking back on it, I go, oh, why didn't I make those guys bigger? And why didn't I do this and that? But I got to tell you, you, we were talking about Jackie Robinson just before we started recording. Buzzy Bavese was the GM at the time, fellow Italian American. I mean, it was, it was kind of neat having that kind of experience. And, and, I went, I had to go in and meet with him to talk about what I was going to put on that cover. And he said, you make sure you have an African-American on there. And that spoke volumes to me because he was there when, when Robinson came, came on to the Dodgers. So uh, it was that kind of a mindset that I, that has carried me all the way through. I, I've gotten lots of compliments on my ability to do people. And for some reason, people say, oh, you really do those African-American, you know, they're human beings, you know, it's just ridiculous to even think anything other than it's just my interpretation as close as possible to what these people look like. The following year, again, really huge. I get to do the, the program cover and they were hosting the All-Star game. So in those days, the team was responsible for everything that had to do with uh, publicity and, and promotion and, and stuff. Major League Baseball didn't, didn't even worry about it. And uh, so because they were going to be hosting the All-Star game, this kind of had an old time feel to it. Plus, you know, the Padres, the, San, the city of San Diego, you know, uh, 1969 was their 200th uh, uh, anniversary. So you have this look. And then that brought me into the cover for the All-Star Game. And that was a thrill. So you see that. Mm -hmm. and don't know why whoever made this decision, that, that was not part of my design to put that big red banner across there like that. It said the All-Star Game on it. Why are you repeating right. that? But, you know, that's one of those lessons that you learn. You know, you have to try to get a little more control. I did illustrations inside it. I did um, uh, uh, the, the logos on the outfield wall. And then, Bill, I got this request to do the Mr. Croc, who owned the Padres at the time. He requested that I do a painting of every team that was showing up for, well, the 26 teams in Major League Baseball at that time. And I apologize for the little snapshot, but I think you can gotta get a, a sense of what that is. Yeah. Um, there, there's the Yankees again. That, that's always a thrill to do anything with the Yankees because that was my team growing up. Because right. that's the that's who we watched. I mean, I could give you the lineup and everything. Um, so it's kind of a loose style, you know, a painting. For one thing, I I hadn't started using a. Uh, um an airbrush yet for backgrounds and stuff so really loose I mean, look at that that's the the mets how yeah. about that what happened yeah. to the Mets today huh <laughs> uh, listen you know uh you're down in san diego i i'm gonna leave the mets fans alone today they had a rough <laughs> night last night <laughs> uh you know detroit tigers and so you you get the gist of it and um and it was a it was a great opportunity because there was this tight deadline, had to work really quick, had to come up with a solution to, to do things. And um and Mr. Croc was just he was just one of those kind of guys that, you know, he wanted something done. He had all the money in the world, you know. He just okay. let's just do it. um after the game, I got called into his uh, Ballard Smith, who was his son-in-law at the time. Um I got called into his office and he said, Mr. Croc wants you to do uh, a painting that you're going to, we're going to give to Tommy Lasorda, Billy Martin as the two uh, managers of the two teams, uh, President Ford, who was the special guest and the San Diego chicken, the, the famous San Diego chicken. 
who did a lot of, you know, it during the game and in between innings did a lot of stuff. So this is the one that I did for Tommy Lasorda. So it had the same, each one had the same kind of a look to it. And again, you see that really loose uh, style there in the background, but you know, I got pretty close to their likeness and everything. Right. So it, it, uh, uh, it came about two months later that the, the Dodgers came into town. I had the painting done. They said, we'll let you give it to Tommy Lasorda. Wait, so, wait, 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 wait. So an Italian kid becomes an artist and now he gets to give a painting to another Italian kid? Like, wait a second. This is, this, this is a fantasy land. This is what happened. And, you know, I had just gotten married in, in January of 78. Okay. And Doing all these paint, my wife was thinking, "What the heck did I get myself into?" You know, yeah, yeah. Her father recently retired from the 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 sheriff's department, and he came over and he was helping me gesso my boards, putting them in the frames, and and everything. Uh, Mr. Croc, after after I completed all the paintings, said that um, we're not giving them to the to the owners. They were going to be given to the owners. We're keeping them. We'll we'll just give them an engraved silver platter and, and a bottle of Chevis Regal <laughs> and, and they were up there for many many years it was always cool going in the into the offices and seeing my artwork all throughout there so uh yeah it was one of those things where I was first a fan and every biography that's been done on me I was first a baseball or sports fan before I even discovered my ability so it was a natural fit for me to get the opportunity to do sports as an artist and, and on at this level i mean we're talking major league baseball and uh, and and i often i often would ask uh people like jim weigel who was the promotions director i go jim my work is so much better today and he said look at for the day it was just as good if not better of the work that we had been getting done so it was there was no question and you were a nice guy, you know, so you were easy to work with, which, by the way, in sports, we see this a lot. There's those players that are catalysts on a team. They, they're, they're good in the locker room. They, they play hard on the field. They may be not the best athletic, you know, wise, uh, their ability, but they're, they're just nice guys. They do great things with the fans. And to me, that was always a, a, a symbol of how you go about when you get to this level. And uh, it was also the thing that my dad always encouraged us boys to always just be respectful of everybody and, 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 uh, and try your very, very best. So, yeah, so getting to do uh, that work early on was, was a thrill. And then uh, Mr. Croc passed away. I often wonder if, if he would have still been alive for another maybe five or, or six years um just how much war war work i could have done and i uh, uh so for the cover of a program you can see this right uh this painting was then put on the program for a whole season uh in 1984 and of course the next year 85 they they get into the world series and um well they get into the world series in 84 yeah yeah in 84 in 80, yeah. yeah but he had passed away and, and then so um I got to do uh, this painting and then it was made into a program cover for the okay. whole season. And then they put it on a, 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 they did a record album of the season and all the great calls and Jerry Coleman calling all the great, hang a, sta a star on that one, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, you know, we're just talking 1969, I graduated from high school, 1984, I'm married, I've got two kids. I'm getting to do work for the San Diego Padres. I mean, it was just a dream come um, true. Yeah, yeah. So, so now let me ask you this question, okay? Because you have a phenomenal story and a phenomenal background, and I love mixing baseball with art. and And for those of you that that don't know, Chris Christopher is fantastic. Anytime you get a chance to meet him, and we're going to talk about that before we jump off air. Anytime you get a chance to meet with him, he's just as personable as he is right now in this interview. So that's that's a lovely thing. But I want to go back to something. You're an Italian kid. You get to meet Tommy Lasorda. 
Tell me how that meeting goes. I, I've heard the story, but I, I want you to share it with everybody. Tell me how that meeting goes when you give them the picture. Yeah. So I'm in the dugout. There's nobody else there. The guys are doing warming up on, on the field in the batting cage. And so there's hardly anybody in the stand. Well, there was hardly anybody in the stand. <laughs> <during the game. laughs> so um, uh, my parents came from Eastern Pennsylvania. It's 64 miles by car to Norristown, where Tommy was from. And he was born in 1927. My mom was born in 1927. So he was told to, to come into the dugout and, and meet me. And he, and he, he was... And he's, he was this way every time I met him. He goes, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? And I said, well, Mr. Sorter, my name is Christopher Peluso. And, and immediately he goes, are you a paisan? And I said, yes, yes, I am. As a matter of fact, my parents are from Easton. He goes, yeah, that's near Norristown. I go, I know, I know. And, um, and all four of my parents came from Italy. And, and so he, he immediately, it was just like this instant connection, Bill, okay. that here was this fellow Italian American and I was going to be giving him something that you know albeit it was a gift from Mr. Croc but when he looked at it he said well you tell Mr. Croc that I appreciate this but I appreciate it more that it was done by a fellow Italian American and I and I got to tell you Bill it's a story that I don't mind telling over and over again because my heritage was always an important part of my growing up my dad always pointed out those Italian Americans that were in sports, you know, even, even horse racing, like Eddie or Carroll. And, um, we had Yogi Berra, like I said, going back to the sixties, you know, watching Yogi Berra, uh, I didn't get to see Joe DiMaggio, but my mom used to listen growing up there in Pennsylvania. She used to listen to the Yankee games. And, um, she always loved the fact that Joe DiMaggio got all these hits, you know, and, and years later, my mom was five foot nothing, a hundred and nothing. And they're, they're at a golf tournament here in San Diego, the San Diego Open. And, and they had the, uh, you know, the pro-am. And so Joe DiMaggio is playing in, in the pro-am. And my mom sees, and my, there's a picture that my dad didn't have time to go run up to. My mom made a beeline running all over to Joe DiMaggio. And she's telling him the story about listening to the radio and, listening to him play I end up marrying a girl whose grandfather and his cousin his excuse me his dad were first cousins in the same little town in Sicily so my my wife is related to Joe DiMaggio and then to, then to get to do him was just a thrill yeah you know so yeah, it, it was just a thing that was just great to have at that young age you know, 1978, I just got married, 26 years old. And, and this guy is, who's a big, you know, manager of the Dodgers. And, and he's telling me he likes my work. Fast forward a number of years, and I see this photograph of him in, his, in the office at, at Dodger Stadium, right behind his desk. I mean, literally right up behind his desk, there's the painting framed up behind him. And it, it was there for many years. Yes. You know, those are the stories that you'll never forget. And those are the stories that that make the love of the game even more powerful, right? I mean, I know we're in October baseball, and I know everybody's fighting for a ring, and everybody's excited and everything. But when it comes down to it, it's a little boy or a little girl meeting their their celebrity person that they see. And it's just, it's phenomenal. And it, I bet you... If I, I bet you still remember the smells of the dugout and things like that, just meeting him and having that conversation, I bet you'll never forget. No, no. And, 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 and you're talking about the, as kids, we collected the cards mm -hmm. and, and there's absolutely unbelievable memories that if I was ever to smell the bubble gum that came out of those tops cards, yeah. You know, um, Unfortunately, we were like those, you know, we had bicycles, we mom yeah. had clothespins, and you found those things on your bike so you could sound like a motorcycle and, and uh, you know, Roberto Clemente and Mickey, they, they got destroyed on, on the spokes. But my son, as he was starting to grow up and 
um, I got him collecting the cards and, um, and, and funny, you should mention about meeting your idol. I mean, I, I was getting a chance to do Nolan Ryan a couple of times early on in my career. And I had to meet with him um, at the team, the, the Astros team uh, 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 hotel and uh, went to his room and, and, uh, and he answers the door in these slacks and nice, nicely, you know, uh, iron shirt and everything, great, good looking shoes. And I, I'm going, man, is this what it means to, to be a professional ball player? Look at those clothes, he looks sharp. And my son had a Nolan Ryan card in his pocket, but I'd always taught him that when he meets somebody, he extends his hand and shakes their hand. And he had to be only about seven or eight years old. And so Nolan was just so gracious. He goes, well, Michael, it's nice to meet you. And he noticed he had his hand in his pocket. And he, you got something in there for me? <laughs> he pulls out the card and, uh, and he said, would you like me to sign that? And he's just shaking his head yes. And he, my son sent me the picture of the card just the other day. Uh, he says, if you ever tell that story, you tell him I still have that card. There you go. There you yeah. go. I love it. I love it. So, Christopher, this has been phenomenal. And we'll get you back on again. But what I want Hot Fan Rivalry followers to know is where do we go? You've got phenomenal art. So, A, where do we go to pick up some of your art if we wanted to purchase some baseball art? And then you know, do, you, do you have anything that you're doing between now and the end of the year where you're at an event or something where people can come see you? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the neat thing is, is that I, I have things like the, the Legends magazine that I did covers for right. and people collected them and I know they still have them. And we sold a lot in Southern California. Well, I have through the Fullerton Museum, when they had the Tommy Lasorda day, I was able to come in contact with a gentleman by the name of Tom Elliott. And he has, he has a store there in Fullerton called Past Times Collectibles. And we got to talking and, and uh, um, I suggested that I come up and, and do an appearance uh, for him um, since it could help promote the, the uh, Tommy Lasorda legacy exhibit that's still going on till the end of the year. And the, there in the in the museum and he said sure that would be great so i don't have a date yet but that's certainly uh, a time and i'll have some items with me that he doesn't have in his store uh that people can get um plus he i, I believe he does have you know a number of pieces like lithographs and everything and then um on december 10th uh roberto angotti and i and i've spoken about roberto um and he has a film called of the Italian American baseball family, and it's a documentary on uh, Italian Americans in, in the game and, and its history and their contributions. And um, I think I'm even part of it. I haven't really been able to sit down and watch the whole thing, but uh, we're going to have a screening of that. And then we're also going to have me set up with uh, uh, paintings that I've done of Italian Americans that played the game of baseball. Uh, yeah. Many of them. I, I was actually able to to contact and, and, and interact with. So, uh, and again, we'll have some items there for sale as well. And and people can always contact me on my Instagram, uh, which I think you have linked. And uh, uh, and if I don't have it, then I can I can get you to people that do. Um, Christopher has done some fantastic art. For those of you, uh, if you were at the Lasorda event, I bought a number of pieces of his Lasorda thing that he did, and I shipped them to some pop bands, and it was, it was phenomenal. Um, but Christopher, I appreciate you being on. When we have those dates, when you have those dates, let me know, and I'll be happy to put them up on our Twitter and on our Instagram and let people know. Sure. And and I'll I'll definitely be out there to to visit with you as well and and be there. But we've definitely got to get you on again because you you've got some great sort. Maybe right. maybe we'll so, get your boy on to talk about Nolan Ryan too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and and his kids now are collecting cards and they get yep. really excited about showing me their new cards. But but it, it, let's before we go, when you think about what you you are about the fan the rivalry mm -hmm. and you can have that you like this team, I like this team, but we're still friends, you mm -hmm. know? If we like the kid one another and everything. That's what we need more in our society. 
Um, and, and it's so much fun to see. I've been watching your podcast, and, and the other day that you were talking to some people outside uh, the after the Cardinals game, were they Philly fans? Wow, yeah, it was Philly fans outside of uh, outside of Citizens Bank Ballpark. They put up TVs outside of, in Philadelphia. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. That's so. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and and of course, Philadelphia is you know that's not too far away from where my parents grew up, and 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 so it it was just great to see people who were that age still excited about the game of baseball. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a tradition that keeps on being handed down and handed. And I hope we never lose that really. Uh, and, and if my artwork can bring back memories for people or, or, or to uh, honor those greats uh, of the players that played on the team over the years, you know, then my job has been done, you know, uh, uh, and, and I, and I enjoy doing it as a fan. I enjoy doing it as an artist and it, it means the world to me. I, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love the history of it and, and having fan involvement, like what you were referring to is why we do this, because you got to be able to have a little bit of banter back and forth, but every, it's such a fun game and it's, and it's a game where you can sit down and you can watch something for two, two and a half hours and not have to worry about anything, right? Put all, all right. the other stuff away. And the stuff that you do, Christopher, is, is phenomenal because it, it brings back what I'm going to call the nostalgia of it, right? When you're talking about Joey D or you're talking, and I've seen you do Steve Garvey stuff. I've seen you do other things like that. And it brings back, we're not talking about people making $500 million over 10 years. Right? Yeah. And no disrespect for those gentlemen that are doing that. That's fantastic. Congratulations to you. But um, that being said, we're, we're, we're taking and we're trying to keep the game as pure as possible, right? As fans. Right. And as my fellow Italian American Yogi Berra would say, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> and that's why they play nine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Christopher, thank you so much for being on. We'll make sure we tag you. Oh, it's my we'll pleasure. make sure this is going to drop on Monday on YouTube and then on Thursday it'll drop on the podcast. So I'm I'm looking forward to having you on yeah, again. But I would love to be back on again. There's so many other pieces of uh, things down through my uh, years as an artist that have meant a lot to me as, as an artist, but also as a, a sports fan. And some of the other stories of meeting some of these players, I, I would love to, to share with you. Absolutely. Love it. And thank you for your time today, Christopher. I appreciate it. And have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. You got it. Thanks.